Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I believe God has got a word for you today. A word that's going to lift you up, it's going to encourage you, and set you free. I want you to stay tuned after this word, and we're going to come back and pray with you and believe God to move anything in your life. And if you need to give your heart to Jesus, we're going to pray with you to do that as well. So stay tuned and be blessed. These uh, young ministers are doing really good um, in the pre-service. And uh, if you can get here, you're going to be blessed. How many has been received from these pre-services that's come? If you can't come, we are uh, putting making them live again on uh, Facebook and YouTube, so you can go back and listen to them. Um, but uh, uh, Mom was supposed to minister tonight. I didn't know that I would be back, but I got back, and she ended up having to do something. Uh, so I'm here, and so I wasn't prepared. I wasn't um, planning on being here tonight, so I didn't get to prepare um, out of James because I know we've been in the book of James. Um, and so I'm, we're, we're going to leave off of James this week. We'll get back into the book of James next Wednesday. Um, I was Since I didn't have to be here tonight or I thought I didn't have to be here tonight, I was uh, preparing and looking into uh, some other things. So tonight um, I'm going to... Go back into the archives, and I'm going to talk about something the Lord uh, kind of alerted my attention to um, uh, on grace and faith. That's going to be our subject tonight, grace and faith. So we're going to have an opening scripture if you want to stand for the reading of that one scripture, Ephesians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Stand and we'll read and honor the word, and then we'll pray and we'll get into this teaching tonight, everyone that can and will. Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 8. And I think Sunday we're having a baptizing. Are we still having the baptizing, Miss Solomon? Anybody that wants to, did you mention that? Uh, anybody that wants to be baptized Sunday, bring an extra uh, change clothes. Um, try to try to wear dark clothes when you get baptized, if you're going to get baptized. So we don't want to put on a show. Hallelujah. We want to keep it holy and and good, amen. And uh, and then uh, we'll do a baptizing right out here after service uh, in um, in the uh, tank. That way we don't have to deal with alligators and sharks and stuff in the water down here in Florida. Hallelujah, amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Since it's one verse, let's all read it together. Ready? Let's read. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Amen. I want to talk to you from the subject grace and faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking God for um, your anointing to continue to flow. And God, flow through this vessel, think through our minds, speak through our lips, say what needs to be said in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I want to focus in on the first part of that verse where it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. By grace are you saved through faith. Everybody say that. By grace are you saved through faith. Let's all say it together. Ready? For by grace are you saved through faith. Hallelujah. Um, I want to talk about that, uh, but first I want to talk about the word saved. Everybody say saved. Amen. It's the, it, it comes from the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O. And this word sozo that's translated saved here, uh, it's, it's translated save or saved 94 times in the New Testament. Um, of course, everybody knows the New Testament is translated from the Greek. The, the Old Testament is translated from the Hebrew. Uh, but... The word sozo, uh, it was translated 94 times in the New Testament, but I want you to understand that not every time that it was translated in there uh, was the word saved uh, necessarily talking about forgiveness of sins. Um, it also uh, was used, the word sozo when it was translated saved, was used in some scriptures to describe deliverance from danger or suffering. Uh it was also used uh, to refer to physical healing. Um, I believe in um, 
James, it was used that way when they said, uh, if any of are sick among you, call for the elders of the church, anoint them with oil, uh, and uh, the, the, the sick shall, shall re- recover. Ah. Put it up there, man. James, we'll just, the devil is a liar. going to take that scripture from my mind. I'll find it. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to quote that, mess that one up. I've quoted it off my life. Hallelujah. Fool you, devil. I got my Bible. Hallelujah. James chapter 5, verse and the prayer of faith, uh, or verse 14 and 15, James 5, 14 and 15. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's why we've got the oil here. And the prayer of faith. Now, what's the prayer of faith? The prayer of faith is a prayer that involves the word. That's what the prayer of faith is. Prayer of faith shall save the sick. And so the word save there is referring to healing, physical healing in the body. Uh, sozo in the New Testament was also translated uh, in some places whole or to be made whole. And the point of this is that uh, the word saved here, when you see for by grace are you saved or from the Greek sozo, that word saved embodies more than just forgiveness of sins. It embodies healing. It embodies deliverance. It embodies provision. It embodies all of the things that God uh, has promised to give us, as Natalie was talking about earlier. So when uh, we read this verse, for by grace are you saved through faith, we could say it like this. We could say, by grace are you healed through faith. By grace are you delivered through faith. By grace are you made whole through grace, for, through faith. By grace are you protected uh, through faith. Hallelujah. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. But now, according to this verse, you are saved uh, by a combination of two things, grace and faith. It's a combination of these two things, and without these two things, you can't get saved in any regard. Hallelujah. Saved uh, from your sins and uh, made new and born again or healed or delivered or protected or anything else. You've got to have the combination of grace and faith. Somebody say it takes grace and faith. Amen. Grace has provided the salvation. And we've discussed that to be more than just forgiveness. But grace has provided salvation, but faith receives or takes what grace has provided. Hallelujah. And that's how you need to see faith. Faith is taking what grace has already provided. Now, understand this about grace. Grace is action, not response. Let me say that again. Grace is action, not response. Say that with me. Grace is action, not response. Hallelujah. Grace is really God's action toward us, not his response to us. Hallelujah. Grace is God's action toward us, not his response to us. If grace was God's response to us, then it ceases to be grace. If anything God does for you is his response to you, and you've got to understand what I'm saying tonight, just keep, stay with me. We'll get, we'll, 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 we'll get somewhere and you'll be better for it. But grace is God's action towards you, not his response to you. If God does anything, if he saves you, heals you, delivers you out of a response to you, then it's not grace anymore. It's something you've earned. It's something you deserve. Grace is unmerited. It's unearned. It's undeserved. Hallelujah. Amen. So, grace, when it's talking about for by grace are you saved, grace was God's action toward us in sending his son to us. And what did his son do? His son sozoed us. His son delivered us. Amen. Grace was God's action toward us in sending Jesus to us. For God so loved the world, amen, that he what? That he gave his only begotten son, amen. 
So that was not a response to anything we did. That was a selfless, unconditional act of love that made provision for us. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus was slain before the foundations of the world. What does that mean? That means the plan of salvation had already taken place in the mind of God before he ever created man. Well, why did he have this plan of salvation? Because he knew man would fail in the garden. And so instead of saying, well, man's going to fail, I guess I can't have a relationship with man, God said, no, I'll have a relationship with man. I'll create man even if they fail, and I'll make up a plan of salvation where I'll send my own son in weak, mortal, sinful flesh to die on a cross for them. And God says, I love man so much, I want a relationship with man so much that even if it's going to cost me my son, I still want to create man. Woo, that's a good God, ain't it? Eh, hallelujah. And so <clears throat> the, 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 the grace of God is his action toward us in sending Jesus. That was a selfless, unconditional act of love that made provision for us. Hallelujah. And this act of grace in sending Jesus provided us with everything we'd ever need. Amen. I think Austin was saying it up here recently. Uh, Jesus plus anything is, it equals nothing. But Jesus plus nothing equals anything you need. Hallelujah. I probably said that wrong. Amen. But it's not Jesus plus anything. It's Jesus plus nothing equals everything you need in your life. Look at Romans 8 and 32. Look at this awesome promise. He that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all. Who did he give Jesus to? All, all, all of us. All means all. We don't have to translate the Greek and Hebrew to understand what all means. Amen. He says, he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? When he gave us Jesus, he freely gave us all things. Amen. Because when God gave Jesus, that was everything. Amen. And so, if God gave you Jesus, then why wouldn't he heal you? Why wouldn't he deliver you? Why wouldn't he provide for you? Because when he gave you Jesus, he gave you the best. When he gave you Jesus, he bankrupt heaven. He emptied the vault of heaven for you and said, here's everything. Here's all of my riches. Here's all of my wealth. Here's all of my glory. Here's everything wrapped up in the body of the Son of Man. Hallelujah. And it's for you. Woo, hallelujah. Are you following me? And so if he gave you the best he had when he gave you his son, and he didn't hold his son back, then why would he hold anything else back? Come on, somebody. To say that God won't heal you is to say your healing is greater than Jesus. To say God won't provide financially for you is to say money is greater than Jesus. To say, that, to, to say God would give you Jesus but he won't provide for you to eat is to say, hey, that money that you need to eat, that's a little more important than Jesus. So I'm going to hold that back. Wait a minute Wait a minute, nothing's greater than Jesus. So what is $5 if he gave you Jesus? What's $5,000 if he gave you Jesus? Come on, somebody, amen. What's healing from sickness and disease if he gave you Jesus? What's protection on the road when you're going to work in the morning if he gave you? What's an angel moving something out of the way so that you make it to your job okay if he gave you Jesus? That's little compared to Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody say, I already got everything heaven could offer when I got Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. This act of grace, this act of grace, remember, grace is the, the action of God towards you. This act of grace has provided salvation for us in every area of life. But it must be received by faith. Amen. Uh, today, Seth, uh, we went and got Seth from a, he was playing with a, he got invited to play with a national team 
at, down in Fort Myers, and so the grandmas took him down there and left him down there. We went and got him today. That's why I didn't know if I'd be back or not. Uh, but but we were coming home, and, and um, we got s to Crystal River, I think it was, and we pulled over and stopped. And we had a cooler with water in it. We didn't know how long we'd be at the park today and stuff. But uh, Seth was, was asked, Lisa said, do you have any water? And she said, yeah, there's bottles of water in the cooler. Um, you you can go get one. And Seth's like, ah, that's all right. Um and so he didn't get up. I don't know if he's too tired or whatever, didn't want to go to the trunk and open it up and get a bottle of water. But uh, Seth was thirsty, uh, and he didn't get a drink, but it wasn't because we didn't have water. It wasn't because there wasn't a water available. It was because he didn't get up and go to the back and get it. Hallelujah. Understand something. It was provided, but he had to receive it by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. If you're thirsty, if someone's thirsty in their heart for peace, if they're thirsty in their heart for joy, if they're thirsty in their heart for deliverance, the, the thirst, the water to quench that thirst has already been provided through God's action of grace toward us in the person of Jesus, but it has to be received. It has to be received. It has to be received by faith. Hallelujah. People today are in hell not because uh, there wasn't a way made. They're in hell today because they didn't receive the forgiveness already provided through that action of grace, through Jesus. Hallelujah. By faith. People are in hell today, and I know that I'll be called a false prophet, and, and if I had a big audience, they'd, they'd, they'd do videos about what I'm about to preach and on, on television or on YouTube or whatever. But, but people are in hell today not because of a sin issue but because of a faith issue. The Bible says that you are condemned because you have not believed. Come on, amen. It says, them that believe shall not be damned. Them that don't believe shall be damned, but them that believe shall not be damned. Hallelujah. It's not a sin issue today. The sin issue has been taken care of in Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, John said, that takes away the sins of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up. If I be lifted up, I know, you're, I know you, you understand it as I'll draw all men unto me. But the word men in there in John chapter 12, I believe it is in verse 32, 31, 32, 33, men is italicized. That means if you see something in the King James italicized, it wasn't in the original manuscripts. It was added by the translators. That should say if I be lifted up, not praised, but lifted up on the cross. If I be lifted up, I will draw all unto me, not men, but all judgment. Hallelujah. When Jesus was lifted up on the cross, he drew all the judgment of God for our sins on himself. He absorbed it all. Is anybody glad about it? I didn't mean to bring that. I shouldn't have opened that can of worms. Hallelujah. I didn't, that wasn't in my notes. Hallelujah. But I just got to preaching up here and got to feeling it and got to seeing it. Hallelujah. But is anybody glad that heaven and hell is not a sin issue today? Sin's been taken care of in Jesus. It's a faith issue. And if you want to be saved, if you want to escape hell, if you want to make heaven your home, all you got to do is put your faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus. And take a drink. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith, let me say this. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm not, when I say this, I'm not discrediting any time that we say God's moving. I'm not discrediting any song where we say that uh, we're praising God uh, because we know he's still moving. I get all that, and that's not, that's not what I'm talking about here but I want to say this, faith does, faith does not move God. Remember, in, in this sense, God's grace is his action toward us, not his response to us. See, we, we've got it backwards. We think whatever God does for us is God's response to our action of faith. That's not how it works. It's the other way around. If we receive anything from God, it's our response of faith to his act of grace. Are you hearing me? 
See, faith does not move God because God already moved by grace. You know what moved God? His grace. His love for us moved him. When did it move him? 2,000 years ago. It moved him to come to the earth and take our place on the cross. Hallelujah. And then he died and went down into hell and took the keys back from the devil and got up on the third day and took his blood back into the mercy seat uh, uh, up in heaven. Hallelujah. And the original tabernacle, Moses' tabernacle, was just a replica of the original tabernacle in heaven. And just like the high priest in Moses, um, here I go again. Hallelujah. Just like the high priest in Moses' tabernacle went once a year behind the veil with the blood of an unblemished lamb to put on the mercy seat to make atonement for that year for the sins of Israel. Jesus, our high priest, and our sacrifice took his blood, not the blood of an animal. That wasn't good enough. Took his blood and went into the mercy room, into the, into the throne room of God and sprinkled his blood on the mercy seat and obtained, whoo, hallelujah, obtained eternal redemption for us once and for all. And then you know what he did? He did something that the high priest in Moses' tabernacle never did. He sat down. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because the work was done. Come on, somebody. The high priest in Moses' tabernacle never sat down in the temple because they always had to shed blood of animals because the blood of animals could only temporarily cover our sins. Jesus' blood didn't cover our sins. Jesus' blood abolished our sins, eradicated them. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he sat down. See, God moved. He moved. Now, your faith is not, is not an action toward God to try to get him to move, to do something for you, to provide for you. He already provided everything through Jesus. Your faith is a response to his action of grace. Is everybody seeing this? Oh, hallelujah. 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 So now we have to respond to what God has already done. I bought the water. I put it in ice. I put it in the cooler. Seth had to act and respond to what I did, and he could have got water and quenched his thirst today. Are you here? So now we've got to respond to what God has already done, and faith is our response. I want you to say this with me. Faith is my response to God's grace. So if, if, if your faith is anything else but a response to what God's done, it's not faith. Amen. Amen. I didn't get a lot of amens on that, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. Now, let me say it again now that you've processed it, and maybe you'll say amen. Hallelujah. If, if your faith is anything else but a response to what God has already done, it's not faith. Uh, there we go. That's better. Hallelujah. If I'm praying, fasting, praising, giving with a mindset to move God as if God is reluctant and God doesn't want to do anything in my life, but if I bombard heaven enough and if I give enough and if I pray enough, maybe this real busy God that's real busy in his kingdom might hear my little whimper of a cry and notice me over here and, and maybe sprinkle a little blessing dust my way. That's not how this works. Hallelujah. If, if I'm praying and doing all of this stuff to try to get this reluctant God to do something, then that's not faith. Hallelujah. That's works. That's me trying to earn it. That's me trying to deserve it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm not going to receive anything with a mindset of like that. Everything I do by faith must be with the mindset of this is me responding to what God has already done. So I praise not to get God to accomplish something, but I praise because it's already been accomplished. Whoo, hallelujah. Come on, amen. I give not to get God to provide for me, but because I already know he's provided for me, I go ahead and give. Because I believe he's got everything taken care of, and because of that, I'm, I'm willing to give up this portion of my income because I already know he's, he's already got my provision set up. Hallelujah. Are you following me? And when I'm, when I'm asking, I'm not asking with the mindset, once again, that this is a reluctant God and I've got to beg him and I've got to keep bombarding heaven to get him to move. 
No, but when I pray, I pray with the mindset that he's already said yes, that his promises are yes and amen. Come on, hallelujah. I pray with the mindset that he's already said yes and it's already mine and I'm really just asking so that I can take it and receive it. The prayer is just me appropriating what's already been given me. It's like me reaching into the bag and getting what's already mine. Are you following me? That's why Mark eleven twenty four says this. Therefore I say unto you, watch what it says, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. When do we need to believe that we receive? When we pray. Not when it shows up. Not when it manifests, but when we pray, hallelujah, we believe that we receive them. And then look what it says, you shall, that's future tense, have them. And so it works like this. You pray, you say amen, and then when you say amen, you don't wait till it manifests and then give God a praise for it. Hallelujah. You, you pray, you say amen, you get up and say, Lord, I thank you, God. I thank you for answering my prayer, God. I, whatever you prayed for, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, I, Lord, I thank you for the breakthrough. I thank you for the answer, God. And you praise him. How long do I praise him? You praise him till it shows up. And what do I do when it shows up? Keep on praising him. Hallelujah. You can't praise him enough. Hallelujah. He's such a good. And if he don't do nothing for you, he still deserves praise. Somebody. <laughs> amen. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. See, look, the, the, word, the word receive here, put, keep Mark eleven twenty four 24 up there. Notice the word receive. Believe that you receive when you pray. The word receive in the Greek is the word lambano, and I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure, which literally means to take. Everybody say take. Hallelujah. It was translated actually in other places of the Bible 106 times it was translated take instead of receive. Really, you could say, therefore I send you what things soever you desire when you pray, take it. Hallelujah. Believe that you take it and you shall have them. Somebody say, take it. Hallelujah. When you pray, you need to believe that you're taking what you're praying for. Come on, somebody. I'm not when I, come on, hallelujah. Let's get a hold of this. When I go to pray, I'm not I'm not petitioning a reluctant God that might hear me and might not hear me. No, when I pray, I'm going in there and I'm taking what grace has already said is mine. Look at your neighbor and say, take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're taking it by faith. You're, you're, you're taking it by faith. You're taking by faith what grace has provided. For by grace are you saved through faith. Grace is God's action towards you in G and through Jesus and providing everything you need, and faith takes it. Oh, hallelujah. Let's, let's look at it. Can we look at it in Scripture? I'll show you how it works. Joshua chapter 6. Boy, I'm going to start preaching. I know I am. Hallelujah. I'm going to get here talking about the walls of Jericho and the and healing lepers and a woman with that. I'm going to preach. I know. I'm going to preach about 15 sermons here. Hallelujah. That's where Natalie gets it from. Hallelujah. Natalie preaches like her and Lisa. The way they get up here, and do, that's how they do when they talk. They get together. <laughs> they preach the way they talk to one another. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 6, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, watch what, watch what he says. The Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho, the king thereof, the mighty and the mighty men of valor. Now the walls are still up. Amen. I said the walls of Jericho are still up. How many knows Jericho was, was surrounded by Two walls, double walls, massive walls. I don't have time to describe how big they were, but they were massive. And uh, while the walls were still standing around Jericho, God says to Joshua, See, I've given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Notice he told Joshua to see it, envision it. Faith, when you're operating in faith, when you're taking what grace is provided by faith, you can see it. 
In other words, your mental picture is not of whatever the, your mental picture is not of death, it's not of defeat, it's not of discouragement. When you're operating in faith, your mental picture is victory. You may not feel it, it may not be manifested, the walls may be staring right back at you, but you see them walls down. Sometimes you got to look at your issues with your eyes closed. Because you're not trying to look at what the devil's been showing you. You're trying to see with your heart. Come on. I'm not trying to see with these. So I'm going to shut these. Hallelujah. And I'm going to open up this. And I'm going to envision my miracle. And I'm going to envision my deliverance. And I'm going to envision. That's why God gave you an imagination. Come on. Hallelujah. You thought imagination was just for uh, uh, when, when, when you was playing as a child. No, that imagination is for you to be able to envision God's word and see it in your heart. And then you, oh, I'm getting ahead. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting, you, and and, and when, you're, when you're really walking in faith, you're more convinced of what you see in your heart than what you see with your eyes. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> that, that's why Elijah could look at an empty sky and tell Ahab, Ahab, I hear the sound of of an abundance of rain even though there's not a cloud in the sky and when a servant came back six times and said I don't see no cloud anywhere Elijah Elijah said go look one more time because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain I'm more stirred by what I see on the inside than what I see on the outside come on has anybody got a vision of what grace has already provided I don't care I'm about oh God hallelujah I don't care what the devil told you this week, this year, last month, I don't care what he said about your job, about your finances, if you got a word out of this book, then start dreaming what this book says, start envisioning what this book says, and take it by faith. Oh, hallelujah. Well, this wasn't supposed to go this way. Hallelujah. Woo, Hallelujah. Somebody shout it, take it, take it, take it, take it, hallelujah. I, I've given you, uh, uh, the Lord said to Joshua, see, I've given the, under thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And then he says, you shall compass the city, all ye men of war, go around about the city once, and thou shalt do six days. You'll go around it one time a day for six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day you'll compass the city seven times around, and the priests will blow with the trumpets on that last time. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout. Ruach is the Hebrew word. It was a victory shout. People shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat. Woo, hallelujah. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Hallelujah. The city was already Joshua's. Now listen, when God said, I've given you the city, that was an act of grace. That was God's grace toward Joshua and the children of Israel. And that act of grace actually, listen to me, that act of grace actually took place all the way back in Abraham's day. Amen? You were talk, uh, Natalie was talking about covenant. God walked Abraham through Canaan. When the giants were there, and he said, look to the north and the south, east and the west. He says, walk up and down in it. He said, everywhere you see and everywhere you put your foot, it's yours. And Abraham said, well, how am I going to know it's yours? How, how do I know it's mine? And God made a blood covenant with him. Remember, he cut the animals in half and a smoking furnace and a, and a lamp went through the, 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 the blood of the animals. Hallelujah. And that was God making a man's blood covenant with Abraham and showing him through blood covenant, it's yours. Now, th that animal's blood did good until Jesus could come and, and fully ratify it in his blood. I don't got time to go into all that. Hallelujah. But Jericho was, was, was given to Joshua already through an act of grace. God's act of grace. Where this was the grace of God giving him the city. But notice, notice that even though this act of grace that took place way back in Abraham's day gave Joshua the city, that God didn't just crush the walls and kill everybody. God didn't just crush the walls and say, the city's yours. No, he said the city's yours while the walls were still up, right? 
Then he told Joshua to march around the walls. Why? Because by grace are you saved through what? Faith. In other words, the grace of God gave the city to Joshua, but God needed a response of faith. Are you getting this? God needed a response of faith from Joshua. That's why he told Joshua to march around the walls. He needed Joshua Joshua to respond in faith in order to receive what the grace of God had already given him. In other words, Joshua, if you believe that it's yours, you'll obey this word and you'll march six days, one time a day, and on the seventh day, you'll march seven times around and then you'll shout on the last time and the walls will come. What happened when they shouted on that last time? What happened? The walls came down. Grace already gave it to Joshua, but God needed a response of faith. 2 Kings 5 and 9. Are y'all still with me? Naaman came with his horses. Naaman, who was the general of the Syrian army, the enemy of Israel. Well, Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Naaman came to the prophet Elisha because Naaman was a leper. Amen. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him when he came to the door, saying, Go wash in Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Now, we know Naaman was there seeking out healing from Elisha because of the little Jewish girl that was a servant, a slave in his house, a handmaid in his house, that he had uh, brought back to Syria through one of the raids of, of uh, the Jerusalem, the, the Jewish people. And she told him about the prophet. Hallelujah. So he sought the prophet out to be healed of his leprosy. Now notice when Elisha said, go go wash in Jordan seven times, go dip in Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall come to thee again like a child. That was God choosing to heal Naaman. By what? By grace. Right? This was definitely an act of grace. This was definitely an act of grace because this was an enemy. This was an enemy general of God's people. Amen. And God could have just let him die. But the grace of God, hallelujah, ain't the grace of God so good, that God chose to heal this pagan general. But what did God need? By grace are you saved through what? God needed a response of faith in order for the healing to be received. And so by telling Naaman to go dip in Jordan in obedience to the prophet, uh, this was going to reveal his faith in the word of God. Are you following me? Amen. But look at what happened because sometimes, listen, Sometimes when we're needing a miracle, when we're needing a breakthrough in our lives, God will give us instructions. You need a miracle and God gives you instructions. Well, God, I didn't want the instructions. I just wanted the miracle. Well, the miracle is already yours. I'm giving you the instructions because I'm trying to help you take it. I'm trying to help you respond to what my grace has already provided by faith. And if you obey these instructions... You're putting works with your faith because faith is dead without works. Come on, amen. And so if you'll obey these instructions, then you're going to receive your miracle. It's not that, the, it's not that what you did moved God. God was already moved. God was trying to put you in a position to receive and take what's already yours. Amen. Amen. So sometimes when you're needing a breakthrough and God gives you instructions, it's because he's requiring faith out of you. Woo, hallelujah. And so, verse 11, when Naaman heard this, he was wroth, right? 2 Kings 5 and 11, Naaman was wroth, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would come out to me and stand and call my name call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and I'd fall out on the floor, amen, and they throw a throw cloth over me and then I'd get up 
and pull the throw cloth off and I'd just be healed of my leprosy. Amen. Naaman must have been to a Pentecostal church. Hallelujah. And then he says, are not Abana and 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 far par, I don't know how to pronounce those words, rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. Jordan was nasty. It was dirty. It was a dirty, muddy, nasty river. May I not wash in them and be clean? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So he turned and went away in, in a rage. Sometimes the instructions that are meant to get a response of faith so that we can take what grace has provided, sometimes those instructions will challenge our pride. Whoo, hallelujah. What are you going to do when your response of faith challenges your pride and you miss your miracle because you don't want to humble down? Hallelujah. And do what needs to be done in order to get what God has for you. Sometimes we're like Naaman and we want it our way. But look at your neighbor and say, this ain't Burger King, baby. Hallelujah. Yeah, tell him. Yeah, say it. Say it to him. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't Burger King, baby. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't get to choose how to receive it. Sometimes you're going to get an onion and you don't want onion. Come on. Sometimes you're going to get a pickle and you don't want pickle. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Sometimes you don't get to choose how to receive what grace has provided. Because sometimes, let, can I give you something, hallelujah, that maybe will help you? Sometimes God gives us certain instructions that challenges something in us, whether it be pride. Sometimes it's fear he's challenging. Because here's what we've got to understand. What God is doing in us is just as important as the miracle we're receiving. What do you mean? I mean, sometimes the instructions God gives you because he's trying to get a response of faith out of you to go ahead and receive what grace has already provided, sometimes what God is trying to do in you, in your character, in your personality, in the person that you are through those instructions is just as important as the miracle you're trying to get. Because, church, I don't just want to be healed and I don't just want to get a breakthrough. I want to be healed and be a better person. Come on, I want to get a breakthrough, but be more humble because of it. Come on, amen. I don't just want to walk around with all of these gifts and all of these deliverances and all of these breakthroughs, but I can't love my neighbor and I don't want to worship and I, the devil is a liar. God said, I'd rather you be in a hospital and sick if it'll make you worship me than for you to be healed and never want to come to church. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Come on, somebody. Sometimes who you are, sometimes the character on the inside of you is more important than the deliverance. Sometimes God says, let me deal with the character first, and then I'll get you your breakthrough. Ooh, God. Some of you need, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Some of you need to quit thinking even about your miracle and just start saying, God, deal with me. And probably in the process of God dealing with you, you'll get your breakthrough. Oh, but... Um, God told, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Hallelujah. God told Moses, Moses, go ahead and take them people in there. I'll send an angel before you, but I can't go into the promised land with my presence because them people are a bunch of stiff-necked, rebellious people. And if I go in there, hallelujah, I'll end up killing all of them. So I'm just going to send an angel. Y'all go ahead and go in here and have the promises and take the land. I'll send an angel before you, but I can't go with you. Moses said, hold on, God. <laughs> Hold on, God. If I can't have you, I don't want none of the promises. Come on. Our church today has got it backwards. We want all the promises, but we don't want the presence of, come on. I, am I preaching now? I know it's Wednesday night, but I feel a Sunday morning anointing that we want the, we want the promises, we want the money, we want the cars, we want the breakthrough, but we don't want the presence. God says, no, that's not what I'm doing in this last day. John, I'm not raising up a church that wants the presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E but not the presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C. -E oh, I'm good, ain't I? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got that right. Hallelujah. God said, I want a people that want wants my glory more than they want anything. That wants my power, my anointing more than anything. Oh, hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I'm a spelling bee champion. Hallelujah. I ain't spell when the anointing gets on me. I think I spelled that right. Hallelujah. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. And so Naaman, here, Naaman, man, he's about to miss his miracle because he can't deal with his pride. He can't humble down. Sometimes faith will humble you. Whew, hallelujah. It'll take humility to walk in some of the faith. Well, God, I just, I'm, some of y'all like Naaman. I just wanted to, I just wanted him to lay hands on me and, and be done with it. And God says, no, I know I need more out of you. God, I don't want to run around the church seven times. Well, that's why I want you to run around the church seven times. <laughs> Woo, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, I don't want to shout, God. Well, that's why I want you to shout. God, I'll look crazy if I dance like that. Well, that's why I'm telling you to dance. Hallelujah. God, I've never given that much. Well, that's why I want you to give that much. Because, hallelujah, it's, it's not, God Almighty, it's not that God's trying to mess with you. He's trying to get a response of faith out of you to appropriate what his grace has already provided. Whoo, hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so verse 13, his servants came near to Naaman and said to him, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? I mean, he's killed people. He's, he's, he's done great things in wars and battles, but he didn't want to go dip in Jordan. <laughs> How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean, Naaman, man, they'll, they'll think I'm crazy going down in there. Somebody walks by and sees me, they'll think I'm taking a bath in Jordan. They'll think I'm homeless, and I'm this prestigious general. I've got all these decorations. I've got a large home, and I've got money, and I've got servants, and I tell people to go here and go there, and they're going to think I'm just a homeless, crazy fool over there washing in Jordan. And God says, that's why I want you to go wash in Jordan. I need an act of faith. Faith will require humility. Let me just say that. Faith will require humility. And, his, and, and so he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. I don't want to leave it without him getting his miracle. Let me read it to you. His flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Woo! Hallelujah. Acts 14 and 6. Y'all still with me? They took most of my time tonight. Hallelujah. These, 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 these women. Hallelujah. <laughs> Acts 14. Oh, God, hallelujah. Let me see if I, I want to do that one. Oh, that's a good one, hallelujah. Let's, let's, maybe we'll end on this one. Acts 14 and 6. They were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel, talking about uh, Apostle Paul and his missionary journey. And, and there said a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked, and the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. This is Paul perceiving as he's preaching that this man's got faith to be healed. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. So look, notice this says Paul perceived he had faith to be healed. Notice it doesn't say that when Paul perceived that God wanted to heal him. Amen. It says when his faith got to a place that he could receive from God and he could respond to the grace of God. When God already decided to heal him when he sent Jesus and he tied Jesus to the whipping post, hallelujah, and put stripes on his back. Those stripes were for our healing, Isaiah 53 and 5. So it, it wasn't that Paul perceived that God wanted to heal him. Paul perceived he had the faith to be able to receive his healing that grace had already provided. By grace are you saved, come on, through, oh, hallelujah. Grace provided this man his healing. God's mind was already made up about the healing. Hallelujah. This man's mind had to get made up. Your mind's got to get made up. Not God's mind. Your mind. Now, how does faith come? Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by the word. Romans 10, 17. What was Paul doing when he perceived that this man had faith to be healed? What was Paul doing? What was he doing? He was 
He was preaching, right? This man heard the word of God until it got rid of the doubt and unbelief in his life. Come on. Until the word built his faith up enough to be able to believe that he could be healed by God. And to it, that word built his faith up until he got to a place where he could receive the healing that grace had already provided. Now notice, notice how this worked. Notice how this worked. When Paul, if you'll listen to me, you'll, you'll learn something here. When Paul perceived that this man had heard enough word to build up enough faith in order for him to be healed, what did Paul do? Paul gave him a word to obey. Why? Because faith is dead without works. God needed a response of faith. faith. The faith that he had had to get into action in order to receive his healing. It had to be acted on. Are you following what I'm saying? And when he acted on that faith and he obeyed the word, what word did he obey when Paul looked at him and, and said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet? When he leaped up, that was him responding by faith. He was acting on faith. Come on, because nothing in his past, nothing that he saw, nothing he felt told him he could get up. What told him he could get up? Faith. Woo, hallelujah. Faith said, if I'm healed, then I should be able to walk. And so he acted on it, and he got up, and he began to walk. Hallelujah. Woo. Are you seeing this? Come on, amen. When he acted on his faith and obeyed the word that Paul gave him, which was to stand up on your feet, whoo, hallelujah, he reached into grace and grabbed his miracle. That's exactly what the man did. Sometimes you don't even need someone like Paul to give you a word. Sometimes you can get so full of faith from the word of God that you just jump up and do what you couldn't do before. And reach into grace and receive your miracle. Whether Paul told him to jump up or he just had enough faith to jump up himself, he's going to have to do something. He was going to have to respond to the faith on his heart in order to receive what grace had already provided. And there was grace with his miracle. But if he had never got to the place of faith where he could believe and be convinced in his heart that he could walk by the power of God, he didn't, he'd have never got his miracle. Through grace, I'm sorry, by grace are you saved through faith. Faith takes what grace has provided. Are you hearing me? And see, this, and I'm, all, I'm done, this reveals the real process of reaching into grace and reaching into grace and getting what God has provided and receiving your miracles by faith. Th let, me, let me say this. This man heard the word until it charged up his faith so much that he became absolutely convinced that he could be healed. And when Paul recognized that, he said, get up. And that man acted on that word, acted on that faith in that word, and he received his miracle. This is what I call, listen to me please, listen to me please. This is what I call the climax of faith. Everybody say the climax of faith. This is what I call the climax of faith. What are you talking about, Pastor? You build your faith up so much by getting into the Word until it climaxes into acts of faith. And then those acts of faith result in your miracle because those acts of faith reach into what grace has provided and pull it into your life. Are you hearing me? Many people aren't getting their deliverance because they won't build up their faith enough to get rid of the doubt and unbelief in their life through getting into the Word. Are you hearing me? And so here's what I'm saying to you. You can't just say, well, listen to me, please, because this will save somebody's life. If you don't hear it, you might, you might, you can get, you know, you can get killed trying to operate by faith. You can die trying to operate by faith. And I don't want you to do that. So listen to me. It's not my job. It's not my job to tell you if you want to get healed it's not my job to tell you, well, you, you better come off of that medication and you better not go get that surgery because if you come off that medication and go get that surgery, then that's doubt and unbelief. Hey, you ain't going to hear that. 
come out of my mouth to you in any kind of counseling session. That's not my job. My job is to preach faith to you, to preach the word to you until that word climaxes into a level of faith where you are convinced that you're healed. And then out of that convincing, you choose to act on faith and do something, and you get your miracle. Are you hearing me? You can't say, well, Isaiah 53 and 5 says, by stripes I'm healed, and the pastor said I'm healed, so you know what? I think I'm going to quit taking my medication. No, 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 no. You better not. You'll end up in the hospital. You'll end up in a grave somewhere, and it won't be my fault. Are you hearing me? But if you build your faith up enough in the Word of God, your faith can climax into a level of peace and, and, and confidence where you'll act on faith and you'll do things and you might lay down a medicine. You might say, you know what, I'm going to quit taking that pill for a day or two. And next thing you know, it's three days and four days, and you, and you go back to the doctor and get checked out, and, say, and he says, well, I see you've been taking your medicine. You're like, no, I ain't took that stuff for three months. But it's because you built your faith up to a level that you could receive the healing that grace has already provided. Am I teaching good? Am I teaching right? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to keep you from getting killed. Amen. If you still got fear in your heart, and you know Isaiah 53 and 5 here, but you still got fear here, then you better meditate on Isaiah 53 and 5 until you get rid of the fear before you do anything. Because if you say, I'm healed, and you say, I'm not going to get that surgery, and the next thing you know, you're in the ER, that's not God's fault. Are you hearing me? Because you, 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 you didn't build... when. When faith has climaxed, like where this man, where Paul says that, that I perceive he had the faith to be healed. And, and, and Paul knew at that moment, I can tell him to get up and he'll just jump up. He couldn't have told him that when he started the sermon. It, it can't, he might have been watching him the whole sermon, Natalie. And he was preaching and talking. And I don't know what Paul was preaching on, but he's probably preaching on healing. He's probably preaching on miracles. He probably told 15 stories of somebody getting healed. And he probably told 15 stories of lame people getting up and walking. And then he looked at that man in about a half hour or 40 minutes into his sermon, and he's like, that man, is re- he believes God will heal him. Get up and walk. And that man jumped up and responded to what grace has provided by faith. Come on. And received his miracle. Are you seeing this? Oh, hallelujah. But if you still got fear in your heart, you better stay getting that word. You get in that word. You can't know. It's not enough to know the word and still have fear in here. It's not enough to know you're healed but still feel the fear of the sickness. Know you're delivered but still fear the bondage. Know that you're free but still still fear the addiction and the everything. No, no, you got to get convinced. And the only way to do it is to get into the word of God until you get so convinced, you get more convinced of what the word says than what you feel, than what the doctors say, than what you see. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I have more, but. I'll let y'all go. Hallelujah. Have you received tonight? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. I still feel the anointing. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. Let the blood rush down to your back to your toes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you really receive from that tonight? Hallelujah. I feel... Hallelujah. I wasn't as prepared as I wanted to be. Hallelujah. I like to be more prepared when I come in here. Hallelujah. But God knows what he's doing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and let's just thank God. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the blood. Come on. Hallelujah. Go ahead and thank him. Thank him for the finished works of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this word blessed you today. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, God, to move every mountain 
in the believer's life that's listening today. I'm asking you, Lord God, to heal, to deliver, to touch, and to set free, Father. Restore those that need restoring and renew those that need renewing, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. For those of you today that want to receive Jesus into your heart, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again on the third day. And I ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer with me, get in contact with us. Look, uh, look us up on Facebook. Look us up on, on the web. Uh, email us. Get a hold of us. And we want to minister to you and make sure we can help you uh, further along your walk with Jesus. Until next time, be blessed.